welcome to Trailer Park Workshop. Anyway, so today we're going to be doing something pretty simple, and it's just a saw blade hand axe, or small axe, or small boy. Um, as you can see, really simple, nothing too difficult about it. Um, really great tool, you'd be surprised. Um, so you make them, or I make them from these. You could use other stuff too. This is a concrete saw. Um, saw blade, excuse me. Nothing too fancy. You can go buy them, or if you happen to know a few construction dudes, they might toss you a handful. Um, but if they toss you a handful, you might get really high quality ones like this. Um, you can still use these, just probably want to remove all that rust. That might be a good idea. I mean, you don't have to remove the rust. You could just leave it on there. Now you can see on here where I kind of removed the rust, it's surface level. It shouldn't affect the integrity of it, just probably should remove it so you don't get tetanus. And yeah, let's get started. So before we actually get started with the build, the things that you are absolutely going to need are some sort of cool tool to cut out the metal. And I personally prefer an angle grinder. Close toe shoes would be appropriate. Angle grinder is what I have. You could use a band saw or a jigsaw that's made for cutting metal. But probably should just get an angle grinder. It's cheaper. You can get them at Harbor Freight for like 15, 20 bucks. Um, also, gonna need the metal. And if you want it to be sharp, either get a file and a whetstone, a bench grinder, or if you're really hurting, Maybe if you have the angle grinder, you could possibly use it. I wouldn't recommend it because that seems really fucking hard. Okay, so now you're going to take a piece of chalk and you're going to draw out your shape. Okay, there you go. Now you have your rough outline drawn. So, I just kind of want to point out that I'm not a professional angle grinder. -er, so, oh. before we get to grinding... A few things you need to know. This camera angle is really bad. So, a few things you need to know. Aha! Uh -huh. I always know where your safety equipment is. So, you're gonna want goggles, for sure. And, especially if you're doing it inside like I am, you're gonna want a respirator. Now, this is because a respirator will prevent all that little fine dust from getting into your lungs. And trust me, you don't want it in your lungs or even in your throat. And, they're a bit pricey. But trust me, they're worth it. It makes all the difference, and yeah. Of course, mine's a bit um, old. I'd probably need to replace filters, but let's get started. Oh, if you have glasses, you're going to probably take them off. Ah, now I'm all muffled. Now you can barely hear me. So I'm going to speak up and hope that you can hear me. Always wear a respirator. Always wear uh, these things. Okay, now that safety's all sorted out, let's be really stupid with the mango grinder. So, I'm just gonna come in right here, uh... Oh, shit. And that's why you should wear flannels! Holy shit! Oops! Yeah, that's why. <coughs> yeah, wear flannels, guys! <laughs> oh. So, as you can see, that happened. I caught on fire. That probably shouldn't happen too often. Um, but yeah, doing this kind of stuff is dangerous. Working with angle. Okay, you're gonna be thinking, wow, that's really ugly. And yeah, it is. This next little part, we're gonna be using this bad boy. So this bad boy is also pretty dangerous. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna talk while I use it, but this is a bench grinder. You could use a file. And we're just going to kind of get this to the shape that I want. And I already have a bunch of 
stuff like this where it's that nice curve, we're just going to kind of grind that into this. So, um, one more thing. When you're grinding, this will get hot, so the first thing you're going to do is deburr it. Like, you see all these little pieces right here? We're just going to take this, go around, and kind of get rid of those real quick. So, let's begin. Okay, so this one, I'm going to be making it kind of more square than my last one. So we're just going to do a gentle curve first, before we make the actual um, thingy. So, normally what you want to do is you want to mark this out, but I'm just going to go with it. So, let's see how ugly we can make this. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is just put in the edge right here, so... I'm just going to take it, hold it at an angle, and do it all the same on the other side. And there you go. You have a nice, clean bevel after doing that. You can do this with a file, or perhaps an angle grinder if you're good enough, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go take this and we need to heat, well we don't have to heat treat it, but you don't know if it's already, it should be hard. You don't have to heat treat it I suppose, but I think we're going to heat treat it anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat this up really hot, and then we're going to take it and dip it, it in water or oil, and yeah. So right now we're, we have the forge turned on, the axe is in there. And right now we're waiting for it to actually get up to heat so we can quench it. And the reason why we're quenching is because while grinding, I actually got it up too hot on the edge. And I don't want the edge to be too soft because it got too hot. So we're going to heat it up, get a hot quench it, make it really hard, and then we're going to temper it. Yeah, that's about it. Um... Okay, so right now we're just kind of heat treating the axe, and as you can see we've got a little forge going with a little fire going. Um, we use charcoal, and right now we're just waiting for the edge of the axe to actually get up to good temperature. So, uh, I'm only recording this because I couldn't hear myself in the last little clip. Sorry about that. But, as you can see I put the... So right now we're, we have the forge turned on, the axe is in there. And right now we're waiting for it to actually get up to heat so we can quench it. And the reason why we're quenching is because while grinding, I actually got it up too hot on the edge. And I don't want the edge to be too soft because it got too hot. So we're going to heat it up, get a hot quench it, make it really hard, and then we're going to temper it. Yeah, that's about it. Um, here. You can actually watch. Hang on, let's see. Focus. Well, you can kind of see how the um, heat's actually traveling down the um, little axe there. So, really quickly though.
Okay, it's time to quench, so I'm gonna come over here, turn this off, grab it with my pliers, grab it, and you can see the ed edge is orange hot. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera still. I'm gonna dunk it in and just squish it around fast. Okay, so now that it's quenched, we're just going to kind of go clean it off real quick. So now that this is mostly clean, we're going to take it and we're just going to take the file and run it across to kind of get off the oil from the edge. And all that build up and help make the edge a bit more, I don't know, good. So we're going to take it, get our angle, and we're just going to... So our next step is going to be to make the handle. And what we're going to use, give me one moment, we have two options. I have... We're going to be using this log right here, this end part. We have our piece, so... Oh, I crushed my hearing protection. So we have our piece that we're going to use, and you can kind of see it's a bit longer than what we need. Which is okay, because that's what the goal is. So now, we are going to split this. So in order to split this, what I'm going to... Well, I'm going to just take this off real quick. Okay, and this is actually, sometimes you can just take the bark right off, and what you can do is, I'll take this, and voila, you now have a debarked piece of wood. So, so let's see if we can split this axe before my battery dies. So you're just going to take it, put it right here, hang on. So you just need to get the axe set into the wood first, so light taps. And then... And there you go, you have a split piece of wood. Not too hard. Just take it. This side. Let's get this side all nice and flat. So, sandpaper, rasps, Dremel tools are really helpful. I do have one, but I personally prefer a rasp because it's more, um, I don't know. It's more handy, we'll say. So, I'll be right. Okay, so we just finished making these two pieces of the handle, they sit flat with each other, and whenever you put the axe in them, one moment, you can kind of see that it sits pretty well, and it's starting to take shape. You're starting to get your, what you're looking for. Um, it's not pretty sharp yet. So, our next step is to decide how we want to attach these. So there's a few different things you can do. What we're going to do is we're going to clamp these two down, and we're just going to drill a hole straight through take a nail and sorry about that we're going to take the nail and we're just going to kind of rivet it through the two pieces so whenever you clamp it don't clamp it completely tight at first just clamp it to where it's a firm grip and adjust it adjust the handle accordingly once you've done that then go on ahead and tighten it up don't do it too much because you don't want to mar the handle and you could i forgot to do this but you can actually take paper towels, kind of use them like this and make padding, which I forgot to do. So we're going to look for some handy dandy nails, and from my experience, generally the thicker the better. Unfortunately, the nail is put in, we're just going to kind of cut off the head so we can rip them, okay? Okay, so now we've got the, uh, oh, we got the heads cut off, we're just going to rivet these, so I'm... Let's get this started. Yep, that's how things go around here.
So, oh, son of a bitch. So if this happens and you really want this axe, just bury that shit into the wood. That's how we do it around here. We just kind of, you know, work with it. So it looks really good on this side, but it's the ugly side. And okay, so I just, oh. so I just sanded this down, the handle, a little bit. Um, I'm not going to do too much work with it because this is mostly a demonstration piece on how to generally construct it. Maybe not so much rivet it. Um, our next step is I'm going to put on a boiled linseed finish, and that's literally just taking a paper towel, wipe, putting the boiled linseed on, and wiping it down. So, I'll be right back. Oh, we're done with this. I've done some testing. I recorded it. And the handle held up pretty well. Um, from this point, there's a few different things you can do. You could sand it down, make it look all nice and pretty. Fix the handle, sharpen it, you need to sharpen it, like this thing's dull. Sharpen it, um, engrave it even. At this point, this is up to you. This is just the base. This is what I'm showing you how to do. And thank you for watching. If you liked it, like it. If you didn't, tell me why. And if you did like it, tell me why. So what, tell me what specifically you liked about this. Um, thank you. This has been Trailer Park Workshop, and I will see you in the next one.